you need something bigger than you to be inspired about. I think we're all born with a deep and meaningful purpose that we have to discover. Your purpose in life is not something you need to make up, it's already there. You just need to discover it. That means to take the cover off of what's already there. And when you do, when you really discover what you're meant to do, it will be the reason you get up in the morning. Prior to discovering your life purpose, it's easy to become sidetracked or feel uninspired or feel like you've accomplished very little in life. But what if these feelings are simply feedback that you need to keep going, keep searching until you discover? And what if it's the universe reminding us not to settle for mediocrity, to continue experimenting for the one thing that lights you up? I also believe we're all born with a set of talents and interests that tell us what we're supposed to be doing. Lots of times they come so naturally to us, we overlook them. We think finding our purpose is supposed to be more profound or difficult, but what if it's right in front of you the whole time? Think about it. Now what keeps people stuck in their comfort zone, driving with the brakes on? Well, I'll tell you, it's the negative images you have about yourself or the effects of toxic experiences that you haven't processed yet. Perhaps this describes you, staying in a comfort zone entirely of your own making, maintaining flawed beliefs about yourself or holding on to guilt and self-doubt. When you try to achieve your life goals, these negative images and pre-programmed comfort zones that you find yourself stuck in always seem to cancel out your good intentions no matter how hard you try. So what if, instead of using willpower as the engine to power your success, you simply release the brakes by letting go of your limiting beliefs and changing the images you hold about yourself? You see, unfortunately, most people just continue to live in their same old comfort zone and then complain about their experience rather than doing something about it. And by continually complaining about, thinking about, and writing about the way things are, you're continually reinforcing those same neural pathways in your brain that got you to where you are today and are gonna keep you stuck there if you don't change them. So to change the cycle, you've got to focus instead on thinking, talking, and writing about the reality you wanna create. You've gotta flood your unconscious with thoughts and images of your desired new reality. And one way to do this, one way to stretch your comfort zone is to bombard your subconscious and unconscious mind with new thoughts and images of what you want. Images of a bigger bank account, a trim, healthy body, exciting work, interesting friends and memorable experiences. The key to dealing with any kind of negative thinking is to realize that you're ultimately in charge of whether to listen to and agree with any thought or to not. Now just because you think it or hear it doesn't mean it's true. You wanna constantly ask yourself, is this thought helping me or is this thought hurting me? Is it getting me closer to where I wanna go or is it taking me further away? Is it motivating me to action or is it blocking me with fear and self-doubt? You have to learn to challenge and talk back to the thoughts that are not serving you and creating greater success and happiness. Now negative thoughts affect your body negatively, weakening you, making you sweat and making you uptight. Positive thoughts affect your body in a positive way, making you more relaxed, more centered, more open and alert. Positive thoughts cause the secretion of endorphins in the brain and reduce pain and increase pleasure. It's the universe rewards action, not thought. Now, obviously it's important to think, but what really makes the rubber hit the road and produces the result are the actions you take. And yet as simple as this principle seems, it's surprising how many people get bogged down in the analyzing, the planning, the organizing stages, and what they really need to do is simply get into action. Now when you take action, not only do additional resources come your way, but you get feedback that helps you adjust your course and refine your approach. But to become successful, you'll need to eliminate bad habits and develop new ones that are more in alignment with the life you want to live. Now the life you want to live will not just materialize one day. Your habits determine your outcomes. So what are the habits that you live with every day that are keeping you from achieving your goals? Now, I want you to be honest with yourself here. Are you always running late? Do you return phone calls within 24 hours? Are you getting enough sleep? Do you follow through on your promises? Do you plan out your day and then work your plan? Now if you don't, well, just imagine what your life would be like if all your habits were productive and future focused. What would your life be like if you ate healthy meals, exercised, 
and got enough sleep? What if you saved money, stopped using your credit cards and paid cash for everything? What if you stopped procrastinating and overcame your fears and began networking with people in your field? Would your life be different? I promise you it will be. So my suggested action step for you is to write down some productive habits that you could visualize and adopt in your life. Now another mistake you might unknowingly be making and therefore sabotaging your own happiness with is allowing yourself to be controlled by your limiting beliefs. Many of us have beliefs that limit our success, whether they're beliefs about our own capabilities, beliefs about what it takes to succeed, or even beliefs about how we should relate to other people. Now moving beyond your limiting beliefs is a critical step toward becoming happier and more successful. And to do this, you must first believe that you're capable of accomplishing your goals and that you're capable of being happy. And here's a simple but powerful four-step process you can use to transform any limiting belief into an empowering belief. The first step is identify a limiting belief that you want to change. The second step is to determine how that belief is limiting you now. The third step is to decide how you would rather be, act, or feel. And the fourth step is to create a turnaround statement that affirms or gives you permission to be, to act, or to feel this new way. While most of us know about earning money, making things happen, and bringing about change in the world, only a surprising few get to have all the abundance, all the glory, and all the satisfaction that this world has to offer, simply because they are the select few who consistently take action. Taking action is the one thing, the most important thing that separates winners from non-winners, the haves from the have-nots, the high achievers from the everyday people. Or perhaps you've watched as a coworker launched a new project that included your ideas, only to realize that you stood by while you could have taken action. Clean up your messes. You see, incomplete projects, unfinished business, and piles of cluttered messes can weigh you down and take away from the energy you have to move forward toward your goals. Physical energy, mental energy, emotional energy are all affected. See, when you don't complete tasks, you can't be fully prepared to move into the present and work on your future tasks. You've got to be complete in the past, present in the present, so you can focus on your future. And what this means is in order to be productive, you must complete any unfinished business or tasks that have been holding you back from the past. So make a list of all the incompletes, all the unfinished tasks you have, and make sure to prioritize them, schedule time, and get those completed. Many people find that it requires great diligence to cultivate a persistent attitude of appreciation. And that's because we've been culturally conditioned to focus on what we don't have rather than appreciation for what we've already received and achieved. When you make being grateful a habit, you'll feel true joy and contentment no matter what you have or don't have in your life. And since the law of attraction states that like attracts like, being grateful will naturally attract more into your life that you can be grateful for. It becomes a never-ending cycle of positivity. Now we do dozens of things every day on autopilot, such as eating our meals, taking showers, or doing the dishes, and we don't have to spend time visualizing these activities or putting them on our to-do list. We simply do them out of habit. Now playing the appreciation game on a daily basis will help you turn gratitude into a daily habit so you can attract more joy and more abundance into your life all year long. Now here's how the appreciation game works. First, set aside a specific time each day to consciously appreciate everything you encounter, everything you look at, everything you see. Now an ideal time to do this is on your way to or from work. Secondly, appreciate the people you pass the road you walk on, the cars that let you merge into a different lane, the street signs that make it easy for you to know where you're going, the rain that's nurturing the plants and the trees and so on. And third, look for the good in all situations, even those you would normally view as negative. As the saying goes, every cloud has a silver lining. Pick your most important goal and then close your eyes and create a visual movie in your mind of that goal being realized, just like Jim Carrey did and see yourself living that dream. See it from the inside of you looking out through your eyes at what you would be seeing, such as someone handing you a large bonus check, or holding your newly published book in your hand, or walking up to your dream car, reaching out and opening the door, and getting inside, starting the car, and feeling the thrill of the car accelerating from zero to 60 miles per hour. And remember to add in the sounds you would be hearing, and then feel the feelings you would be feeling if you'd already achieved it.